The pheasant is one of the most sought-after game birds in North America, but populations in the wild have dwindled. To replenish them and also supply a market for pheasant meat, farmers raise breeding stock and incubate their eggs. To make it more likely, they'll yield chicks. With stunning plumage and an ability to both run and fly, no wonder the pheasant struts around. Each pheasant lays approximately four eggs weekly, April through to July. Farm workers collect the eggs daily before the pheasants have an opportunity to nest. With their intervention, the hatch rate will get a big boost. It will go from 40% to at least 75%. The farmer washes the eggs in water and special soap to remove dirt and bacteria that could infiltrate the shells and harm the growing chicks. She inspects the eggs and rejects any cracked or very large ones that would contain a double yolk. Eggs with cracks or double yolks won't hatch. One last dip and she sets the eggs aside to drip dry. Once dry, she taps eggs together systematically and listens. If the tap sounds like fine china clinking together, they're suitable for hatching. But if the tap sounds dull, there's likely a crack. By listening, she finds one or two cracked eggs she missed with a visual inspection. She places the eggs in an incubator rack and transfers it to a cooling room. The pheasant eggs chill here for a few days. The cooling slows down cell division until the farmer is ready to put the eggs in the incubator. Chick production is timed for two hatches weekly. When the time is right, she transfers the eggs to the incubator. The incubator is a toasty 100 degrees Fahrenheit to mimic the warmth of a hen's body. She latches the racks onto an automated system that gently rocks the long cradles back and forth to turn the pheasant eggs. Turning the eggs routinely is something that nesting hens do naturally, and it's important. Without it, the developing embryo could stick to the shell, causing abnormal growth. The farmer monitors the incubator temperature and humidity several times daily. Three weeks later, she removes the rack and places it on a tray lined with cheesecloth. She opens each cradle and the eggs spill softly onto the tray. At this point, there are tiny pits on the shells caused by the chick's beaks as they attempt to break through. Once on the tray, she arranges them close together in a figure eight configuration. This way, the chicks can feel each other moving, cueing them to break out of their shells. She pumps water onto the tiers of the hatcher now. The hatcher is warmer than the incubator. covers the trays with screens to keep the chicks from jumping onto other trays. As the water heats up, the humidity increases. This causes the shells to weaken, making it easier for the pheasant chicks to break out of their shells. After a couple of days, the eggs have hatched. After drying off, the chicks are fluffy and lively. The farmer packs them in ventilated cardboard boxes. Freshly hatched, they'll survive 60 hours without food, giving the breeder enough time to ship them anywhere in the world. That's why pheasants are easier to ship when they're chicks. Some customers prefer more mature birds, so the farmer raises some chicks in wire frames for a week until their legs become stronger. Then they move those chicks to other heated buildings until they're ready to thrive outdoors. Some will be kept as breeding stock, others will be sold as food. The rest will be introduced into the wild and just fly away.